Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome to your regular dose of the Battle Mechs of Battletech. Today's episode is actually one I'm doing like a good deed, more than anything else, for someone who is a very big fan of this mech. But just like with most topics, in both Battletech and Warhammer, and others, it is something that I would have gotten to sooner or later. The mech though, is one with a name out of legend. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Lancelot. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A few stats on this guy include It is a heavy design at 60 tons, an impressive top speed of 97 km an hour, and a rounded price of 13 million sea bills. The Lancelot was originally conceived in response to a Starlink Defense Force contract. This required a medium battle mech that could operate with minimal logistical support and fast enough to take part in mobile operations and pack with enough firepower to be a viable threat on the battlefield. With all these criteria in mind, Krupp Technologies attempted to combine the speed of a medium mech with the survivability of a heavy mech in the Lancelot. But despite the use of a lightweight extra light engine, the Lancelot still ended up in the heavy weight class. But the SLDF was still impressed enough with the speed and firepower of the design. Or at least impressed enough to order 250 of them in 2581. The Lancelot has an entirely energy-based armament allowing it to operate away from friendly supply lines for an extended period of time. At the same time, the usage of a Hermes 360XL engine not only allowed it to be faster than many other heavy mechs of the time, but also allowed for 13 double heatsinks to be installed. The use of only 9.5 tons of armor was considered quite light for its tonnage. However, this was partially offset by the design's mobility and its subtle curves, presenting a narrow silhouette for the enemy to target. Its advanced Krupp KBC battle computer, a standard in the industry, offered superior internal system monitoring, such as the current armor status and skin temperature, without distracting the pilot during battle. The most exceptional part of the Lancelot was its KBC Starside Model 3 TNT system, which could track and prioritize hundreds of targets and projectiles at once. This also made the Lancelot superior at shooting down enemy fighters. A great many Lancelots, along with the factory of Krupp on Mars, were destroyed during the Civil War. And as the advanced systems which had gone into their construction became lost tech, the mechs were pushed to the brink of extinction. Luthien Armor Works obtained copies of the design and began production after the Second Succession War. But their own LNC-2502 model had capabilities that were greatly reduced. With only average speed now, and enough armor plating to withstand just a couple of solid hits, pilots began to call it the Coffin. Whereas before the fall of the Star League, the Lancelot could be found in many militaries, by the end of the Succession Wars, less than a dozen operational original models were still in existence and many of those were heavily modified due to battle damage. In the wake of the clan invasion and the Battle of Tukaid, presenter Marshal Anastasius Focht would rebuild the Krupp Stellar Factory on Mars and restart production of the original Lancelot for the Comguards. Examples of these would also be used by the Word of Blake in the prosecution of their Jihad. The weapons carried by the Lancelot covered almost the entire range of energy weapons available and gave it enough firepower to compete even with an assault mech. The main weapon was a Kinslaughter PPC mounted in the right side of the torso. The Kinslaughter had a tendency to generate more heat than the average particle projection cannon if not properly maintained though. This was backed up by two Krupp Model 32 large lasers, known among the mech warriors as the Fur Burners, for their excellent performance and another Krupp Model 2 medium laser in the center torso. On Al Nair, a level 2 consisting of a trio of Lancelots was credited with the disposing of a lance of atlases 
which had so far successfully defended the system's major production facility. Using their comrades to relay targeting data to them, the long-range brawlers pounded away at the atlases in the vacuum environment until they penetrated their side torsos, disabling the extra light engine of the heavier mechs. By the end of that battle, only the Lancelots left the field under their own power. On Liao, many Lancelots were assigned to keep the skies safe from the attacking Hell's Black Aces aerospace fighters during the Blakiest initial push. Although their state-of-the-art computer made them feared by the aerojocks, even these machines were not able to turn the tide of battle. A notable mech warrior associated with the Lancelot was Neil Anthony. This guy actually received one of the very first Lancelots, which he used in the Reunification War to single-handedly defeat 57 Torian battle mechs. Of course, not all of them at once. This was regrettable for the rest of his regiment though, because Anthony was an egomaniac braggart, whose favorite topics were the many women he seduced and the schoolyard foes he'd beaten before he even got into a battle mech. Becoming an inner sphere media darling and getting his piloting methods into textbooks made him even more insufferable to his fellow soldiers. A few variants of the Lancelot include Unfortunately, I couldn't find a lot of pictures on this thing, so the variants are not accurately represented. The LNC-2501-S1 This one removes the PPC and the large lasers of the standard variant and replaces all of them with ER large lasers. Ferrofibrous armor provides protection, while the remaining tonnage was devoted to extra double heat sinks. Unfortunately, this one did not survive past the Starlig era and was only found in the SLDF. The LNC 2501X This one was produced by Krupp prior to Amaris' seizure of Terra. It is an upgrade of the basic design, using an endosteel chassis and ferrofibrous armor. The weapons are the same, except the large lasers are extended range versions and four jump jets were added for mobility. Funnily enough, field testing revealed that the inclusion of the jump jets did little to improve the design, and most of the pilots requested either extra armor or more heat sinks instead. The LNC-2502 Manufactured by Lufian Armor Works from their plant on Lufian, this one retains the weapon array although with different models. A Lord's Light PPC, two Sunglow heavy lasers, and the Victory 23R medium laser. This came at the expense, however, of a smaller Pitban 240 fusion engine and 19 single heat sinks. With a new top speed of only 64 km an hour, this made for an easy target for other mechs of its weight class. The less efficient heat management systems made it unable to unleash its full firepower too. Firing both large lasers and the PPC at the same time put the mech at the risk of shutdown. Lufian Armor Works also had to replace the Krupp electronics used in the Starlink variants, installing a Cypher Kit 4 communication system and a Hawkeye B3 targeting and tracking system. The LNC-2503 This one is a field refit of the 01 model owing to a proper lack of spare parts. It swaps out the large lasers and extra heatsinks for a couple of rugged autocannon fives. The model is made tougher with the inclusion of additional armor, although the extra protection comes at the cost of reduction in speed to a maximum of 85 km an hour. The LNC-2504 This one is a completely upgraded version built to utilize the improved C3 computer in use by Comstar and the Word of Blake. In addition to using an endosteel chassis and an extra half a ton of armor, the PPC and the large lasers were upgraded to ER versions. In order to make room for all of these, the medium laser was removed. The LNC-2505 This one is a bizarre variant aimed at fighting conventional forces. The medium laser and two heat sinks were replaced by four machine guns with one ton of ammo. The armor was not upgraded, and this one has the same speed profile as the older 01 model. 
the LNC2506. This one is an upgrade of the 04 variant, first employed by the Word of Lake Militia, replacing the ERPPC with a standard PPC and removing two heatsinks. The use of a small cockpit and an Excel gyro allowed for the addition of a targeting computer. The LNC2508 This one has a single PPC, while each arm has an LB5X autocannon. This one also carries an improved C3 computer. It uses a small cockpit and a steel armor and light ferrofibrous armor. The Lancelot C Introduced by Kendra Smythe Jewel, this is a clan Lancelot, carrying three Calibri Delta Series large pulse lasers into battle as a light mech hunter. 16 double heatsinks and 9.5 tons of armor protected. The Lancelot C2 is another variant of the Clan Lancelot, entering service 25 years after the C. It is quite similar to the original, each arm carrying an ER Lodge laser while an ER PPC is mounted in the right torso. To fight infantry or create smoke, a couple of flamers are in the center torso. 17 double heatsinks offset the heat generated by all the weapons, and it can also sprint up to 120 km an hour because of its mask system. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the chivalrously named Lancelot Heavy Battle Mech for today. It does seem like a mech with a bit of a troubled history, but one which definitely pulled through in the end. To be honest, I didn't even know this thing existed until someone suggested I cover it. But now that I did, I think it does look pretty cool. Are you familiar with the Lancelot? Is it among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? Do share any thoughts or experiences you might have had with it in the comments below if you want. And if you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and have an awesome healthy day. This is GDN signing out.